morning this Easter Sunday morning we come with celebration in our hearts oh God recognizing that it is the day that our Lord Jesus rose from the dead and in that he took hold of the keys of hell and brought unto us the ability to step into realms that we've only imagined and so we come, O oh God, with thanksgiving in our hearts this morning, declaring that you indeed are God, that because you are risen and because you live, we can face anything that comes. Everything that comes before us, Lord, is nothing because you have conquered the grave. You have conquered everything that has held us bound. And we come in celebration this morning. We give you praise, O oh God, for there's none other than you, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God, from the depths of our hearts. There's no one that is like unto you. We give you praise this morning. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. If you are glad to be here this morning, give a shout of victory this morning. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated. Welcome everybody. I, I, just looking at this new dome, seeing the colors, it's so, so, so radiant. By the time the hall is full, you'll be amazed at what you see. Hallelujah. Just welcome someone close to you. Just welcome them with love, with joy, with the celebration that today holds. And if today is your first time of ever worshiping with us at this present house, can I just see your hands? God bless you there. Please, please rise wherever you are. And if you're around them, truly welcome them. Welcome them. Welcome them. Please welcome them. You're welcome, man. Hallelujah. 
at the end of the service, you'll be told where we'll have a reception for you outside, okay? Um, can we have the video announcements, please? Hello and welcome to our special Easter Sunday rally at this present house. We hope you have had an awesome time today as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is this your first time here? We'll like you to know that we are a governing church passionate about advancing God's kingdom and purposes here on earth. We'll also like to get to know you better, so please join our welcome team at the red carpet after today's service. They have something special in store for you. We're only a few hours away from one of the biggest lifestyle events of the year. The TPH Souk and Family Fun Day takes center stage tomorrow. This hall will be transformed into an indoor market while the dome grounds will be a fun arena. We'll have music, comedy, and even a fashion show. It's the perfect place to come enjoy Easter Monday with your family, so don't miss out. Our choir, One Music, will be holding audition soon. So if you're interested, please pick up a form at the information desk after this service. Time now to take a look at what's in store for us in April. On Saturday, April 2nd, there'll be a water baptism by immersion for anyone who has never had that experience. Just sign up at the information desk after the service. Business Wednesday returns in April. On Wednesday, April 6th, Mr. Shegun Agbaje, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Guarantee Trust Bank, will be speaking. Time is 6.30 p.m. here at the Dome. The TPH Ladies Health and Fitness Session comes up on Saturday, 9th of April. It starts at 7 a.m. right here, and there will be a free medical checkup for everyone. Relationship Wednesday is back. This time, it will take the form of a question and answer session with Pastors Dell and Amanda Balogun. It's themed The Art of Marriage. Date is Wednesday, April 13th, and time 6.30 p.m. here at the Dome. For more information on these announcements, you can stop by the information desk after the service. Remember to stay with us online this week. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.
Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on, stand on your feet and lift your voice and say, Here, roll. Put your hands together for this wonderful team of musicians and singers. One music. You may please be seated. Thank you guys, that was wonderful. I want us to put our hands together for everyone who's worked hard to put this whole hall, stage, and production together. You know, behind the scenes, there are people who are working. So let's put our hands together for Pastor G and the team that's behind him. And those of you who are watching us online, we're so glad to have you join the service this morning. In, um, I think, Ma Matthew 28, from verse 12, something happened uh, right after the, the resurrection. You may have heard it says the chief priest met with the elders and they devised a plan. They actually bribed the soldiers. It says they gave the soldiers. So there's been bribery, you know, around for a long time. It says that they gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them, You are to say his disciples came and stole the body away while we were asleep. So the enemy has always tried to discredit the whole concept of the resurrection and it's the bedrock of our faith. Next verse. But you and I know that he rose from the dead. It says you have to say his disciples came and stole him away while we were asleep. How many of you believe he, he, he rose? He rose. Now lift your voice and declare to the heavenlies that Jesus rose from the dead to die no more. I believe in the power of his resurrection. I believe that he rose from the dead that I might be freely justified. I believe he rose from the dead and today he is seated at the right hand of the Father in power and in glory. And he shall come again to judge both the living and the dead. And this morning, I stand on the truth of the word of God. I believe in the power of his resurrection. And as a child of God, I am called to walk in the same power and authority. Because he rose, I can rise. Because he rose, I will arise. Because he rose, I can face tomorrow. Because he rose to die no more, I have the power over death. I can say, death, where is your victory? Grave, where is your authority over my life? God's grace is available in my life. God's power is at work in me. Because of the power of his resurrection, I celebrate the power of Christ's resurrection. Come on, give God praise in this house. Someone make some noise. Lift your voice and say yes. Yes. Glory to you, to his name. You may please be seated. Such a joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. A few quick announcements. Uh, yeah, Pastor G, please join me. Let's make some announcements. Right, um, all right, G, can you explain? Let's start with the environment. Good morning. Please, how many people were here on Thursday for the AYDD? Activating your divine destiny. And that was, remember the rain? It had not stopped since that time. So, I'm sure you saw in the car park a little bit of, you know, puddles of water. We really want to, uh, you know, uh, crave your understanding. We're going to find a, uh, a, a fix this week, actually, uh, because we saw we've been pumping this water all throughout the night, 
and it rained again this morning. Um, so please, between now and next Sunday, please just give us some time. We we'll get that fixed. Uh, because I saw a few people just walking through the waters in the morning after so long. So please bear with us for, for a few a few more weeks. It's, um, the dome is a work in progress. Um, um, can Junior Church have an announcement? This Junior session? Church, please. Um, how many people saw some of our kids this morning in different Bible characters? How many people? Did you see King David? <laughs> what about Mary? And the angels? So please, Junior Church just sent a note. They want parents to come into Junior Church and take pictures with them. It's so exciting. I've been there earlier this morning. I think we should clap for the kids. And, and thank you to the parents also who took time to help the kids with their, with their characters, you know. Sometimes the kids seem to be a bit of a nuisance, but, you know, this is, this is what makes their day. <laughs> so please, we, we would like for you to take pictures with them uh, before the service is over in Junior Church. Let's talk about um, tonight. We have a concept called Be at One. We, we designed the logo. Have you got the logo? The, yes. the, the logo says Be at One. We're hosting Lagos. So TPH is hosting Lagos. But we're hosting. Yeah, let's, let's clap to that. As we said a couple of weeks ago, God is calling us into community building. And uh, the times when we gather, we pray, we worship together, we hear the word. But beyond the gathering of God's people, there is the place where we're called to break bread, to share fellowship at a smaller level. And so be at one is our concept of taking the message of the kingdom out of the temple into homes. And that's honestly where the power of God will be released in the days ahead if you are a host or a leader i'd like you to stand to your feet this morning please i want to pray for you that god's grace would abound to you i want to pray for you that your home will become the sanctuary of jehovah i want to pray that the ark of god's power the ark of god's presence will be placed in the center of your home and that your house will become a center of God's excellence and power. And that from tonight, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And that which you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That God will visit you with his grace. And that there will be angelic protection around you and your family. And that because you've hosted God's people, God himself will look upon you with favor, with mercy and with compassion. That your hands will bring healing and that your words will bring power power and authority as you speak as you minister as you share God will confirm everything you speak with signs following I want to thank those of you who are host that God will honor you for this work in Jesus name we pray you may please be seated now, I want to invite um, can we invite a couple who's who's hosting yes uh, Shola and Bolande please Please put your hands together for them. Well, we'll, we'll like you to uh, invite everyone to your home. <laughs> well, <laughs> well it, it's just really to share an invitation beyond the church so people know that ordinary people, not just pastors, are hosting. Okay, um, so we are the Adikoyas. Um, we're not pastors, we're not preachers. Um, we're hosting Be At One at, at home. Um, I, I, the, the, the concept is very simple and straightforward. It's a, it's a way of us coming together um, as, as church members or even as members of, the, of this house and just relaxing, sharing. And, and some of the concepts that we hear, some of the um, messages that we hear, it's just for us to break it down. What does it mean for us? Um, how does it apply to us? And but in a in a very very cool, calm um, atmosphere, it's not so pressured. We're not preaching; it's sharing. To be honest with you, actually, if you think about it, it's sharing and people bringing the collective energy that we all have, the ideas that we all have. By the time we share, we we, we live with with purpose, with power um, that we've all brought together. So it's just a an easy going. Thank you. Pastor Bandy, I know you and the team have also worked very hard. Thank you very much for your good work. How many homes have you got tonight? 
50 homes, at least 50 homes, just on the island on the mainland. Well, we're only starting with the island. Perhaps a couple of weeks later, we'd also have homes on the mainland. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys. Well done, well done. Thank you. Come, come on, let's, cl let's clap to that. Thank you. Yes, PJ, please join us for this announcement. PJ is our power mama. How I many of you heard her on, on Friday night? If you guys are going to clap, why don't you just appreciate people properly? Let's appreciate people. So we've been, we've been praying every morning at the Dome for the past week. Now, we will continue this week. We'll give tomorrow a break and then Tuesday... Wednesday, Thursday, we're praying about the power of God. If you were at the night vigil, we spoke quite a bit about power. And we want to take the things we, we spoke about at the vigil and pray through. So PJ, please invite everyone to the prayer meetings on Tuesday, Wednesday. And Thursday. Good morning, church. Good morning. If you've been attending the, in the past two weeks, we've been praying. If you've been attending the morning prayers, can you raise up your hand? Only a few people. Well, well, I want to invite the whole like, church. People don't like raising their hands, you know. <laughs> um, we want to invite the whole church to be a part of this meeting. They're usually very powerful, very awesome. It's just one hour, 6 to 7 a.m. in the morning. And all we do is just pray, make declarations, and just declare the mind of God in the mornings. Remember in Job where he says, where God was talking to Job, and, Job, and, and he said to Job, have you even commanded your morning? So sometimes you may not be able to do it all by yourself at home. It's a good thing to come and, you know, join the corporate prayer and just pray. And sometimes you're feeling, you know, feeble. I don't feel like I'm praying. But when you hear, when the people of God come together to pray, there's, there's united energy. And then we're able to pray and we're able to birth the purpose of God. It's always an awesome thing, starting your day off with prayer. Shifting the things in the atmosphere before you go out so that the Lord goes ahead of you and you have victory every day. So we're inviting everyone to be a part of these prayers. Just try your best. Um, have the Holy Spirit to wake you up. If you're not a morning person, just tell the Holy Spirit to wake you up. He'll wake you up to pray because prayer is key to everything. Thank you very much, PJ. Thank you. So please join us. What time again? Six? Six, six, six to seven. To seven. Uh, many churches, in fact, a friend of mine said that they've stopped evening uh, meetings because at the end of the day, he says when he takes evening meetings, he finds other people are so, so tired, so dry, and he finds evening meetings sort of sap energy from him. So he prefers morning meetings. So in their church, the midweek meeting is in the morning, 6 a.m. And they've had quite a good attendance. So we're actually considering, you know, <laughs> we're adding morning meetings to our evening meetings. So for those of you who feel I can't come in the evening, I live too far away, maybe a 6 a.m. meeting might be a good idea. So please, but this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, if, if you can make all three days good, if not, at least just one morning. Thank you very much. Ah, all right, the souk. Please invite some ladies and let's talk about it. Okay, so in a couple of hours, this place, like the video announcement said, we transformed into a market. Oh, Miami, are you here? Is she here? Yes, she is. She's the assistant there. Stop hiding. Please join me <laughs> quickly. So this, um, this um, auditorium is going to tra be transformed into like a marketplace. And we themed it a core of the future. So you're going to have a lot of vendors from different sectors, different market, um, 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 different, different sectors showcase their businesses in this place. So we're inviting everyone in church to be a part of this um, um, event. We, we are hopeful that 3,000 to 5,000 attendees, visitors would come here. You know, so we're asking if you get, if you get our emails, if you get our Facebook um, information, if you get Instagram information about the event, please share and post. Um, apart from the Apart from the fact that the vendors are going to be selling their market, it's, always a, it's also a good place to network. It's also a good place to meet other people. It's also a good place for the children to have fun. Beyond the businesses showcased in here, that we're going to have fun things, entertainment outside for the children. We're going to have entertainment for the men. The men are not, um, they're not um, out of this, um, this whole event. We want you to be a part of this event. We want you to come. We want you to bring the whole family, the whole family thing. PJ, did the men also take stores? Because someone said to me uh, last week, they thought it was a women's market. 
So men also took stores. Yes, some men took stores. Uh, men who were into furniture, car sales, interior designs, construction properties, real estate. So it's going to be a real fun day tomorrow. So we advise you to please, or we encourage you, invite you to please join us at the TPH Souk, even just for the fun of it. It's going to be a really great outing. Thank you, PJ. What else? PJ, anything else? All right, thank you. Okay, let's, let's care for PJ. Let's, let's go into the word this morning. It's always just frustrating when just a few people clap. Listen, the, the whole idea is, it, it's, like a, it's, it's like in a stadium. Sometimes there's a wave of applause. It's just nice when spontaneously people just sort of clap and encourage. Let's do it this morning. Okay, why don't you reach out to someone and wish them a happy Easter again. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, well done. Happy Easter. Happy Easter is doing great. Happy Easter. God bless you. Romans chapter 6. So we're celebrating what represents the core of our Christian faith. Pastor Nigel, we're so glad to have you here with us today. So we're celebrating the, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. As I said, it's the bedrock of our faith. It's the core of what we truly believe. So it's not just Jesus' birth that's important, important to us. Because sometimes I feel people attach importance also to Christmas. Now as important as Christmas is that Jesus was born but it's also important to celebrate the fact of his death and not just his death, but his resurrection three days later. As we said earlier on, the soldiers were bribed to say that his body was stolen. So sometimes there is a, there is a plan from the enemy to discredit the whole concept of the resurrection. How can anyone be raised from the dead. And there are these crazy scientific theories about, there's something called the coma theory. There's something called the hallucination theory that Jesus never really died, but we believe that he died and he rose from the dead. And a couple of years ago, Time Magazine actually tried to do Christians a favor by coming into the position of, a, of, of Christian belief to try and prove they were looking for scientific evidence that the resurrection actually happened. But the truth is that the true believer in Christ Jesus does not really need proof outside of the scripture. Romans 8, 16 says, the spirit of God bears witness with our spirits. It's an inner witness that we have. We, we believe it. So the Bible does not need the support of science. The Bible does not need the support of archaeology. The Bible does not need anyone to defend it. The Bible can defend itself. The evidence we seek is in the Bible itself. When they said to Jesus, give us a sign that we may believe in you. He said in Matthew 14, 20, he says the only sign you need is the sign of Jonah, the prophet. He said, as Jonah lay in the belly of a huge fish for three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be buried in the earth. That's Matthew 12, 14. So our message is that Christ rose from the dead. And so the message of the resurrection of Jesus is the ultimate sign of Christianity. So Easter becomes the ultimate sign of what we believe. That's what we're called to believe and that's what we're celebrating. So reach out again and say to someone, he is reason. He is reason. And to those of us online, I want to say to you, he is reason. In Romans 6 from verse 3, 
that's my text this morning. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe we would also live with him. The scriptures say that Christ rose from the dead to die no more. He cannot die again. The ultimate price has been paid for our salvation. But that Christ resurrected into a new nature. That he rose by the power of God. And that after his resurrection, he then had a divine life. He then had the power of a new life. And that's my message today. That what God calls us to is to live the way Jesus lived when he rose from the dead. So we do not need to die physically to live the way he lived. But he died and rose to show us how we are called, how we are supposed to live. And that's the deep message I've brought today, but it's not so deep. That the same divine nature God gave Christ is what he gives you in Christ. So in your recreation, in your salvation, there is a dying and also a resurrection. So you and I are called to walk in the power of resurrection. That's what Philippians 3 says. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That's our prayer today. That I might know him. Can I have that scripture please? That I might know him and the power of his resurrection being made conformable to his death. You and I are called to know him. You and I are called to walk in the power of resurrection. So the same power that Christ walked in is somehow what God calls us to walk in. So our prayer is that in our walk with God, we will begin to see degrees of this power. In Galatians 2.20, Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. So it wasn't just Christ who was crucified on the cross. He says, I am crucified with him, but nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the natural, in the flesh, I live by the faith and the power of the Son of God who gave himself for me. In the death of Christ, I also die. When Christ hung on the cross, I was there with him. When he was buried, I also have experienced the burial. That's why we're calling everyone to go through the experience of water baptism. Because when you give your life to Christ, in a sense, your old life dies. And you're called to live in a newness of life. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you go to the cross. But then you rise up immediately. 
And water baptism is really an external sign of something that has happened within. When you're immersed in water, it's a sign of death and burial. When they bring you out of the water, it's a sign of your resurrection. We used to teach an, in, an outward sign of an inward grace. And it's an announcement to the world. Two observances in the Bible. That as Christians, God calls us to perform. Holy communion. And what about it? So the 2nd of April. PG, 2nd of April. 2nd of April. We want you to register. There will be a short class to explain this whole concept of death, burial, and resurrection. So we leave out the death of Christ, his burial, and we leave out the power of the resurrection. So that God's original plan for Easter was not just another celebration, but often, many times, we take activities, we take ceremonies and make them the real thing. There are times the church degenerates into the place of activities. We like activities. Activities give us a sense of, of religion. And so people love to celebrate Palm Sunday. I remember when we were young celebrating Ash Wednesday. When they put the ash on your forehead, we try to see whose ash will last all day long. the food, the drinks. We love to say the grace at the end of a service. But it's beyond the activities. It's beyond the ceremony. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees in Mark 7, 13. He said, you, you people take, he says, you nullify the word of God by your tradition so that there is a power beyond the tradition of Easter. There is a message beyond that which we celebrate at this time. It is the power of his resurrection that you are called to walk in. God's intention for Easter was to give his people power. God's intention for sending Jesus to die Right, raising them up from the dead is that we be delivered from the power of the, the enemy and we begin to walk in the authority of his kingdom. We've heard it said before, people have always said that a bird in a cage is not a happy bird. The cage may provide some measure of food and comfort and security. But the bird is designed to lift his wings and fly. The same way a fish out of water cannot function effectively. A fish is designed to swim. And when God made man, what did he say? He said, let them have power. Let them have dominion. Let them have authority. You're not called for rituals. You're not called for religious activities or church services. You know, you're not even created to sing and dance and be entertained. We're created for power. It's in our DNA. Let them have dominion. That's your call. God has not changed his mind. Salvation is only the doorway to bring us back to our original mandate, which is to walk in power, to walk in dominion. Over what? The Bible tells us over the birds of the sky, over the fish, over cattle, over scorpions, over serpents, over issues, over circumstances. Jesus said, you shall receive power. When God, as you know, created Adam and Eve, 
The whole world was not the Garden of Eden. Outside was the wild, wild west. Outside were demonic powers. The garden was only a section in which God planted eastward somewhere and said to Adam, extend the whole garden. Make the whole earth a garden of Eden. And when you're through with the earth, move on to Mars and Venus and Pluto. But the enemy knew that which man was called to do and brought subtlety and deception. And before we knew it, man lost the reason for which he was created. But in the heart of God is still a desire for people who would walk in this measure of authority. People who would understand that the reason that they live is to exercise a measure of authority. And something within us yearns for power. Something within us yearns for that authority. And that's why people love promotion. When you give someone promotion at work, there's an elation within. It's, it's like this is why I leave. Why do people love titles? Because it gives them a sense of power. Why do some men beat their wives? I'll tell you, they're exercising something within them, but it's just a perversion. What God said is power over the environment, over birds, not over your wife or over any other person for that matter. So you, you're designed to conquer. You, you're designed to rule. You're, you're wired to overcome situations. You're programmed to establish something from within. That's the message of Easter. That's the divine nature. The ordinary person cannot exercise dominion. It's a spiritual thing. It's a power. That's why the Bible says, if the same spirit, Romans 8, 11, that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, not another spirit, not a fake spirit, the same spirit dwells in you. Will he not give you this life? So will he not bring resurrection life to your mortal body through this spirit that dwells in you? Today I'm calling you to go back to your call, which is to walk in power, which is to walk in authority, which is to exercise dominion. I still believe that Nigeria is a great country just waiting to be subdued. God never gives you a finished product, never gives you a perfect nation. He gives you the raw material and says, go subdue so that the world is waiting for you. The nation is waiting for you. Systems are waiting for you. That's our calling. Do you know when you walk past a blocked drainage, it's saying, are you the one to unblock me? When you come across a delinquent child, the child is saying, can you show me the way? When you come across degradation, it's saying, what can you do about this? So the environment we see today is the perfect environment to exercise Christianity, to bring the message of Easter. That's your calling. Please reach out to someone and tell them, that's your call. To show the way, to lead. Why do you go to job? It's not to get a salary. Your job gives you an avenue to exercise authority, to lead, to express your graces, your gifts. They can't afford you. Do they know what you carry? You're not just doing business just to be a businessman. Your business, your business is an interface of the kingdom to bring heaven's resources into the earth. Your business is Mount Zion in the midst of Babylon, assailing the very powers of the enemy. We're delivered, Colossians 1.13, out of the power of darkness. We've been translated into a new kingdom. We're called to rule. We're called to reign. We're called to master situations. Do you know when Christ rose from the dead, the first thing he did, when the disciples saw him, they had all said, we go our fishing. They had abandoned the message. 
When Christ rose from the dead, the disciples were toiling. Guess what he did? He prepared fish. Supernatural provision is part of the divine nature. When Christ rose from the dead, do you know he walked through doors? The principle there is that nothing shall hold you back. It was many that believed. Are there any believers? Honestly, I have only one message and I've been preaching this message for 25, 30 years. It's just the message of the kingdom of God. The message of humans walking in power. The message of us being God's agent on the earth. Us representing God. That's the meaning of life. That's your calling. Easter, it's about translation. <clears throat> Out of the power of darkness. A lot of prayer went on on Friday night. A lot of prayer. And I'm only bringing a few thoughts on the things we spoke about on Friday night. That God calls you to be a witness. That's what Jesus said. You shall receive power. I'm going to pray for you today. That the power of God will come upon you in a fresh way. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. To be a witness. One who testifies of what he has seen. So you tell people, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. Jesus is my king. How do they know? It's not by your singing. It's not by your dancing. It's not by your going to church. It's by the demonstration of the power. So you say, Jesus is my king. Demonstrate it. The Bible says, the borrower is slave to the lender. It's good to borrow money when you have a business plan. When you're working according to your plan when you're using other people's money, when you're using the loan to leverage on something. But some people perpetually live as borrowers. The Bible says you are a slave. You are under the control of someone else. You don't pick up phone calls. When the bank begins to put pressure on you, you run helter-skelter. Notice when you pay off a debt, you breathe a sigh of relief. It's a sign of a measure of power when you live in financial liberty. That's power. The Bible says the wicked borrows and does not pay back. So paying back the money that you owe is a measure of exercising power. How many of you like to have malaria parasites running up and down your body? When you're sick, you're unproductive. When you're sick, you're just not able to do the things you want to do. You're bedridden. But you know, walking in health is a measure of exercise and power. When people see you, see your children. Okay, you're down for a couple of days, a couple of, but then you're up again. You're growing older. But as your days, so shall your strength be. Though the outward man perishes, somehow there's a renewal on your inside. That is power. When you're debt free, you're walking in power. When your children are doing the right thing, you're walking in power. When things are collapsing all around you, but you are standing, that's power. When your marriage is reflecting the Christ and the church, that's power. You're called to be a power. A witness of his power. Your words ought to carry weight. You decree a thing is established. That's the message of Easter. Some people have limited power only to someone perhaps hopping out of a wheelchair. That's a measure of power. If God gives you that gift, the gift of healings, by all means walk in it. But then beyond that gift, there are, all the, there are other dimensions of the power of God. Jesus said, behold, I give you power to trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. So whether you are an IT consultant, you're a teacher, you're a secretary, you're a business person, you're a nurse, you're called to walk in a measure of authority. Let people know you carry something. That's power. Power to resist temptation. Power to live a holy life. Power to do the right thing.
power to speak the right words, power to hold back when you ought to. That's what makes a Christian a witness. That's the message of Easter. And when you're walking in that measure of power, you begin to exercise it everywhere you go. In your Jerusalem. Then from your home, move into your Judea. And it's in, it's in degrees. It's us. It's the church who can take care of the poor. It's the church who can sort out issues. We are the ones God has given supernatural wisdom. I pray for you that God will give you wisdom to resolve issues that confound the world. We're a Daniel people. We're a Joseph people. We're an Esther people. We carry a Davidic anointing. That's something you and I carry in Christ. Unfortunately, we've allowed the traditions of men to remove that which we believe is the truth of the word of God. I have to round up my message now. Can you go walk in power? Power over the enemy. <clears throat> power over poverty. Power over disease. Power over the environment. Jesus told the disciples, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out devils. Don't lie there and let demons press you down at night or eat in your dreams. There should be a holy indignation concerning those kind of issues. Your call is to rise up and conquer. What was the last instruction Jesus gave his disciples in Luke 24, 49? He said, I want you to tarry, tarry in the city of Jerusalem. For what? Until you're endued with power from on high. The world is waiting for you. The nation is waiting for you. The economy is waiting for you. You need to go master something. Why do, we, why, why do politicians, why do people look for people in government? Because they exercise power over a certain aspect of life. Why do people look for doctors or even mechanics? Because they exercise some measure of power in a certain aspect of life. You ought to exercise power in some aspects of your life. You're not called to crawl through the earth with no authority. They interviewed Tiger Woods years ago and he said, I'm called to dominate my field. He, he, he spoke the message of the child of God. He said, I'm called to dominate. I'm dominating this area. This is why I was created. This is why I was born. So that the message of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ is one of dominion. It's one of power. It's one of authority. Can you be a witness this week? Can you rise up and stand against the power, against the power of the enemy? Confront evil wherever you see it. Walk with God. Be a witness. All that you do. And so I'm praying that this, the homes for be at one tonight will be the place where we express the power of God. And when God brings you and makes you a leader in one sphere of life or the other, it, it's not to abuse people. It's not to humiliate people or to intimidate people. It is to inspire them. To help them to be the very best that they can be. That they themselves will begin to walk in dominion. So leaders, inspire your people. Activate people around you. Influence them. Whenever you see confusion, degradation, bring order. God is not the author of confusion. It means that confusion has an author. The devil is the author of confusion. It's music to his ears. So wherever you are, you must not allow confusion. You must not allow degradation. Don't sit in a place where lights are not working, wires all over the whole place, the place is filthy. Take a decision. Let me do something about this. That's why you were wired. That's why you were born. You've got to move away 
from the lowest level of what is called Maslow's hierarchical needs, where there's some very basic things. Jesus said, don't even worry saying, what will I eat? What would I drink? What would I put on? He says, these are the things the pagans are concerned about. These are the things that bother unbelievers. But you seek my kingdom. Seek its righteousness. Seek its power. Come on, lift, lift your hands to God and let's just bless the Lord this morning. Oh God, we bless you. We just bless your holy name. We just bless your name, oh Jehovah. There's something that Easter is stirring up in our hearts this morning. There's something being activated in this house this morning. There's something God is breathing upon this house. It's time for you to show power. Let people be attracted to you because you carry power. Let people see something about your life. Let them see the integrity. That is power. Let them see the holiness. That is power. Let them see the glory of God. That is power. Let them see your marriage. That is power at work. That your marriage stands when marriages are breaking apart here and there. Oh, shalala halabra. Today there's a holy indignation within me for someone to rise up and say, this is my call. This is the reason for my creation to walk in authority, to exercise dominion. You know, in John chapter 1 verse 12, the New King James Version, as many as received him, that's Jesus, to them, King James Version, please, as many as received him, to them, King James Version, please, he gave the right, he gave the power to become a son of God. Are there any believers here? Then there is a privilege. There is a right. There is something, an aristocratic privilege that belongs to you as a child of God. You are not called to lack. You are called to exercise financial prudence in the area of wealth creation. To them that believe in his name, to influence, the call to authority. Can you seize every opportunity this in the days ahead? God never told David, David, thou shalt kill Goliath. David recognized an opportunity. He was wondering, why is everyone afraid? Are they not called to exercise dominion? He said, let no man be afraid. I shall take on Goliath. I shall take on this challenger. A young boy of 17 said to Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today I will take your neck. I will take your head and feed it to the birds that the whole world may know that there is a God in Israel. Listen, people, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the Lord. He has not changed. He is looking. He is waiting for men and women who can rise up and build his kingdom on the earth. Nothing else works. Nothing else seems to work. No one has the answers. We have the answer. His name is Jesus. We have the authority. He came from heaven. Jesus says, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now you go. You go. You go in my name. You go in my authority. Lift your hands and say, I receive the power. I can't hear you. I receive power. I receive authority. I receive the kingdom of God. Say, oh God, it is your pleasure to give me the kingdom. I can't hear you. Say, I receive the kingdom. I receive the power. I receive the authority. I receive the boldness. I receive the strength. Say, the government of God shall be on my shoulders. I have royal power. I have life, I have sovereignty, I have dominion, I have ranking, I have power, I have stature, I can tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. My strides are longer, my steps are secure, 
My hands are stronger. My face is like flint. I carry the grace of God. This is my time. I can't hear you. This is my time. Start to your feet and say, this is my time. Someone says, my time for governance. My time for elevation. My time to rise up in the name of our Lord Jesus. Today, the spirit of might is upon me. The spirit of wisdom in the name of our Lord Jesus. Someone give God praise in this house. Come on, you've got the power. Give God praise. And that's why you've got to die to your own will. You've got to die to your own purpose. You've got to die to sin. That I might know him, the power of his resurrection, being made conformable, Philippians 3, to his death. That means in his dying, I also die, but that is not about the dying, it's the living, Philippians 3, please. That I might be made conformable to his death. Can I see the NIV version? So it's just not to know him and the power, but to share, becoming like him in his death by your own dying. You've got to die to sin. This is not the time to walk in sin. This is not the time to do that which displeases the heart of God. This is the time to please God. This is the time to keep his commandments. This is the time to walk in purity. It's a time to walk in holiness. It's a time to keep your steps in the fear of the Lord. It's a time to say, Lord, help me, guide me every day, in every way. My words, my actions, keep me, oh God, stayed upon the truth of your word. Listen, how can you say, I please God and ask for his power when you do not walk in accordance with his word? So we've got to bring back the message of holiness. You cannot say, I want the power of God, but you're sleeping with your girlfriend, you're not married to her, it's not going to happen. You can't say, Lord, give me authority to cast out demons. But, excuse me, you don't have the truth in your heart. How can you defeat the father of liars when he's your father, you're a liar? And so holiness precedes the power. That's the message of Easter. Oh, shalala bahala kiyendolelelo. Thank you, Lord. May we receive the power to live a holy life. Peter said, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. There is a power that pertains to life. Can I see that scripture, please? Um, there is a power that pertains to life. Second Peter 1, I think. Pertains to life. There is a power for living a holy life. May you walk in that power. May you see the hand of God upon your life. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him, who called us by his own glory and goodness. Next verse, please. Through this, God has given us great and precious promises. Through them, you are called to participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world. The message of Easter is a message of escape, not from the world, but from the corruption in the world. Glory to God. Father, we bless you. Glory to God. Thank you. Lord, we receive your word. We receive the grace that's in the word today. We will step out of here, almighty God, and receive power for living. Lord, we just do not celebrate Easter and Christmas. But between these two celebrations, you call us to walk in the power of life. And so we have received your word today with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Come on, someone give God praise. Someone shout hallelujah. Thank you. Did you get anything from the word of God today? Something you can take away, something you can work. 
time to go. We have a preparing for a second service now. I'd like to take an offering before we we leave. And um, each, each time we, Pastor Benga apologizes about the environment, apologizes about the rain, the road. Well, I, I guess we'd have to, as leaders, take responsibility. But honestly, if we got more help, if we got more assistance, we would do a lot more. So there's a building there. Everyone who comes says, have you started to build and you abandoned? We said, no, we're going back to building. So really, we're going back to building in April. And so we want you to begin to give. When Pastor Jimoke spoke, she spoke so powerfully about the reason, the purpose of giving, the purpose of wealth. So we want you to be part of what God is doing in this house. Just don't be an observer. Be a participant. Get involved somewhere. Sometimes, sometimes in this church, there's a sense of liberty. We don't want people to feel compelled or oppressed. But sometimes it works against us. People say they don't ask for things. But, but you can see the things that we need. In the past, we would make calls, phone people, harass people. But we, we believe we're raising people with under, understanding and revelation. But sometimes, I guess we have to ask so people know what our needs are. We, we have needs everywhere. We have like 2,000 needs currently from people to homes to building to contractors to managers to our secretaries. We need administrators. We need money. We need teachers. We, need, we want to complete this hall. Even though this is temporary, we thought it's important that God's people are comfortable while we're waiting for the big building. The reason why we haven't completed is also resources. So we're really stretching our resources. And honestly, when people say church is rich, what they mean is that people are rich. There's not, well, a church shouldn't have billions in its account. To what purpose? Except it's an endowment where you are spending the, maybe the returns. But we haven't reached that level. So when we have needs, it's the people who are rich we call to. So we do need your help. We do need your grace. We want you to exercise dominion. We want this we want people to drive past. I mean, I drove past this church last night. I drove on the road last night, and I was a bit pained. I said to Pastor G, when I, I saw the lights were not working. So I asked what happened. They said the digging up of the road disconnected some of our lights. And the place was in darkness. And I said to G, get some engineers. Let's fix it. We cannot be darkness in the midst of darkness. Darkness is the absence of light, and we are the light of the world. So we do need your help. So please, Pastor G and the pastors, Pastor Nigel, Pastor Okandu, Pastor Kola, and the rest of the team will be outside. Sometimes I say to people, where are you? They say, well, I'm taking a break. I don't want church trouble. I'm thinking, where are you coming from? How about those of us who are in it? We, we, I wasn't, my kids don't call me pastor. They call me daddy. I'm just a normal daddy. But I was called into this work. And all of us have a call, one way or the other, to express the power of the kingdom. We need ushers. We need ushers. We need musicians. We need men who can sing. We, we have over 2,500 people, close to 3,000 in this church. And sometimes we're searching for people to do things for us. So please, today, can you have some largeness of heart and come and talk to some of us pastors and say, I will contribute my time, my resources, my money, my newsprint, my home, my house, for something God has laid in my heart. And the Lord will bless you even as you step out to do his work. All right, everyone. Uh, have you take, if you haven't taken, if you haven't given your offering, raise your hand. There's a hand here. All right, please, I, I'd like us to open up the doors at the back. I'd like to see the light. I'd like us to see new guests. If it's your first time, if it's your first time, there is a red carpet under one of the marquees outside. Please, we will all be there. Pastor G, Pastor Nigel, could you guys go? Let's talk to people. Pastor Kola, Mrs. June, Auntie June, join us. Please, please join us outside. Please, don't just rush away. Come and say well done to some of the pastors. And see you. Thank you for logging on to our broadcast today. We hope you join us next time. This message has touched you in any way and you would like to listen to it again. Simply log on to our website at www.thispresenthouse.org.
Easter Sunday Rally at Dick Crescent House. We hope you have had an awesome time today as we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Is this your first time here? We'll like you to know that we are a government church, passionate about advancing God's kingdom and purposes here on earth. We'll also like to get to know you better, so please join our welcome team at the red carpet after today's service. They have something special in store for you. We're only a few hours away from one of the biggest lifestyle events of the year. The TPH Soup and Family Fun Day takes center stage tomorrow. This hall will be transformed into an indoor market while the show grounds will be a fun arena. We'll have music, comedy, and even a fashion show. It's the perfect place to come enjoy Easter Monday with your family, so don't miss out. Our choir, One Music, will be holding auditions soon. So if you're interested, please pick up a form at the information desk after this service. Time now to take a look at what's in store for us in April. On Saturday, April 2nd, there'll be a water baptism by immersion for anyone who has never had that experience. Just sign up at the information desk after the service. Business Wednesday returns in April. On Wednesday, April 6th, Mr. Shegun Agbaje, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Guaranteed Trust Bank, will be speaking. Time is 6.30 p.m. here at the Dome. The TPH Ladies Health and Fitness Session comes up on Saturday, 9th of April. It starts at 7 a.m. right here, and there will be a free medical checkup for everyone. Relationship Wednesday is back. This time, it will take the form of a question and answer session with Pastor Zell and Amanda Balogun. It's themed The Art of Marriage. Date is Wednesday, April 13th, and time 6.30 p.m. here at the Dome. For more information on these announcements, you can stop by the information desk after the service. Remember to stay with us online this week. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thank you for logging on to our broadcast today. We hope you join us next time. If this message has touched you in any way and you would like to listen to it again, simply log on to our website at www.thispresenthouse.org and to give in support of any of our various causes, just click on the Give Online link on the homepage. God bless you as you give. To find out more about This Present House, you can log on to our website at www.thispresenthouse.org from anywhere and at any time. You can also follow us on Twitter with the handle at MyTPH or like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash MyTPH. Thank you for logging on to our broadcast today. We hope you join us next time. If this message has touched you in any way and you would like to listen to it again, simply log on to our website at www.thispresenthouse.org and to give in support of any of our various causes, just click on the Give Online link on the homepage. God bless you as you give. To find out more about This Present House, you can log on to our website at www.thispresenthouse.org from anywhere and at any time. You can also follow us on Twitter with the handle at MyTPH or like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MyTPH.